Hey guys, it's me, Ken. Question, do I look smarter in these glasses? Well, guess what? You're wrong, Padna. Now, what do I got going on? Well, I'm fixing to send off a shipment, like numerous guitars in one box to where? Mississippi, of course, the only place in the world that they appreciate my guitars, North Mississippi. Do not covet my 1951 Mississippi trailer house, which kind of means sun house. Do not covet this. Your soul is worth far more than this. Trust me. I know mine is. So, we are going to take this. This is one of the guitars. This, Check it out. Boom. Gone. Don't stop it and rewind and look at it so you're in the know. Just, just deal with the anticipation like everybody else. But it does have this cool brown sunburst something or other. Anyway, I am going to stain this guitar neck using a technique you've seen before. I don't know. Stop fighting. You both can be... Right here, right now, we did a stain on the one of the other guitars that's going out there, the Mississippi Mud Slide. This finish on this neck. No, not the finish from this guitar, but one like it on this neck. And we are going to use Mississippi clay dirt and actual Mississippi River water. And I gave you an episode right up there, right about now. Oh, baby, Chick Flick Teal Pointer had to go nine nine. Sorry. Anyway, we did the kit guitar, and we did a thorough, in depth look at the what's, why's, and how's of why I use dirt to finish a guitar. So we are going to. I'm going to walk you through the step by step. It will not be as in depth as that episode up there. But we're going to do this and throw it together. And that's right. It's going to be awesome. You know it. Let's hit the bench. All right, guys. Let's get started. First thing I did was took and sanded this neck down really, really good. I do not want anything on this neck. I don't want fingerprints. I don't want oils. I don't want anything like that. So use a sanding sponge and get over this one last time. This part is going to be under the uh, license plate and the frame, but you'll still know. Don't take shortcuts. I'm praying for you. So, you're going to need a little sandpaper or a sanding sponge or something like that, and you're going to get all of the debris off of here. Now, you're going to need to tape off the fingerboard. I do not want what I'm going to put on here uh, on the fingerboard. And so now let's get down into the ingredients. You want to remember, again, have your mouse up there. There is an eye will pop up when you move your mouse. That's that thing you're using on your hand with your hand. And move that around. And you're going to get an episode that tells you into detail why and, and all these chemical reactions that we're fixing to show you, but here's what you're going to need. Okay, first thing, you're going to need some wipe all rags. W-Y-P-A-L-L. -L. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, but the bottom line is they're made out of paper. They're dustless. They're lintless. And once you're done, you can burn them and reduce your carbon fiber put footprint. Check. Wipe all rags. Next, you're going to need some potassium silicate. Potassium silicate. My friends at Kremer Pigments sell that, and you want to put it in a bottle like this, an aspirator bottle, so you're not slopping it all over the place. You're going to have to work fast here. You're going to put this stuff wherever you want it, and while it's still wet, you're going to come up with this Mississippi mud concoction, which is one part mineral ground, Again, check out my friends at Kremer Pigments. And for every one part of this, one part of Mississippi clay, mud, dirt, dried out, and with 
all the chunks removed out of it. So what does one part mean? One part each. That means if I put one part of this in here, then I would need one part of this in here. That would mean if I had a semi-load of this, and I would need a semi-load of that. I don't really think we're going to do that. So we're going to need Mississippi River water. If you don't have Mississippi River water, what are you doing watching my channel? So one more time, potassium silicate, mineral ground material, Mississippi clay mud dirt, Mississippi River water, and something to put, what, what else do we need? Oh yeah, you're going to need some Jesus when you die. All right, let's get to work here. I have this cup. You can kind of see through it. It's semi-transparent, kind of like politics. Now, I'm going to take one part of this ground material. Wow, that doesn't even fit in there. So I guess I'm going to have to do some fractions or some algebraic equation here. You know, I'm going to do one part, another part, and another part. No, not like this part, like this part, okay? So I have three of those. You know what? Let's just do six, four, five. See, I didn't miss a lick easy when I was sidetracked over there by that fashion advice I just give you so now we're going to take this Mississippi clay dirt that's been dried out and we're going to do six of them one two three four five six okay that's going to be on your third grade final exam so pay attention so there we go now I'm going to mix this up, chick flick teal pointer, baby chick flick teal pointer. This is why you're the worm. This is why you're the new guy. The older chick flick teal pointer went through this while they were breaking him out as a worm too. Anyway, you see that? Now, I have a line right there. It's about as big as my fingernail. Did you see that? Metricator. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help you out and use your methodology. So I'm going to need about two fingernails right there. So I'm going to add an equal amount of Mississippi River water. Yeah, you need to watch that movie up there because you're not believing me that this stuff actually, there is hermetically sealed proof in that episode. So here, let's put this on here like so. Is that two? You're saying, hey, Ken, the amount of water is going to be confused by it sucking up into dry soil. You know what, dude? I'm the one doing this. You just watch me. I'll do the thinking here. Anyway, we're going to stir it up, and we're going to leave it on the counter, and at a place where we don't like people like work and they're going to think it's tapioca pudding or something. They're going to eat it and we're going to laugh and we're going to act like we didn't even know what happened. Okay? See that? Yeah, that's mud. Good. We want to keep this agitated. Kind of like, well, kind of like your mother-in-law does you, but, but a little bit more than that. Anyway, we want to make sure... Because this clay is going to drop out of here. If you know anything about soil chemistry, this clay is going to drop out of here fast. So every time we move this, but we need to have this ready. Because that potassium silicate dries fast and we need to put this on while it's still wet. Look at that slopping all over the place. Oh, it's still in there. You probably want this too bad. Anyway, there we go. Easy money. Okay, so I have my wipe all rag ready. I have a brush ready, and I'm always ready to agitate my clay mud dirt mix here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully work in areas that are manageable. Again, I have the fingerboard taped off here, uh, and I am just going to take my wipe all rag here and get potassium silicate on it. 
and just kind of do this until there's some there and dump it on there like so. Okay. I'm gonna make sure. Now, the stuff will start to get sticky pretty fast. It's sinking into the wood. You want to make sure that there's not big globs of it on the other side there because it will show up in the stain. But get everything you want done. Now, unbeknownst to you all, I still have some mushy stuff, some old stuff that came off the Mississippi mudslide in this old Noxzema bottle I stole from somebody's grandma. This is the same stuff that went on the Mississippi mudslide. So, you want to just glob all that mud on there like that. There you go. Now, again, we do not want to let the potassium silicate sit too long. And the reason I have these boards here is so I can flip this over and get right to work on this next part right here. So, we're going to daub rag again. We're going to wipe potassium silicate on there like so. A little bit more. We're going to come up to here. We're going to get the sides. Again, we're not going to let the fingerboard get all this stuff all over it. This potassium silicate is soaking into the wood and it's sealing the wood and giving you a transition layer to put this mud on and the mud will actually stick to it. Let me move this back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. You see that? Don't worry if it looks bad. It's going to look bad to the point where when I take this stuff off, it's going to look great because the mud is sticking to the potassium silicate and it's actually being embedded into the water, chemically bonded. Now this is the kind of stuff they did in Italy when they were making guitar, guitars, violins in 1540-something. I know some of y'all are old enough that you were there, so please jump in if somebody decides to be a naysayer. But you can see what we're doing here now. We're going to let this stuff dry thoroughly, and then we're going to come back and sand it off and you are going to be completely and utterly dismayed. I think you get what we're doing here. Okay, in a mud pile like we're at the glamorous sand dunes and if you are at the glamorous sand dunes you know that you need Tonka toys to uh, make the experience real. Okay, look at that. Do, do, do. Right, now we're gonna make sure nothing got rubbed off up here. There we go. We'll flip the other end around. I'm a headstock man myself. Some of you like might like working the other end. All right, I've chosen, chosen, chose did to do the part on the inside where most people can't see because I don't want to have to worry about all that. You know what I mean? Anyway. Glob it on there like that. Get it on the sides. The potassium silicate is getting sticky, I can tell. Don't worry about it. if there's clumps of mud. It'll come off, come off in the wash. 
Don't forget the details like right up here. You're going to be able to see that. Okay. All right, guys. Now we're going to wait for Mississippi mud and river water and some other chemical function that I just made up to freak out my chemistry teacher who threw me out so many times. I should tell you that story. It involved picking up trash and and all that just before I graduated. So I would graduate. I basically had to threaten a person and say, hey, if you don't give me the credit, I'm going to come back and take your class every time and every hour of the day, and I'm going to make your life a living hell. And then if you don't give me at least one credit that I need, you'll look like you're... Anyway, I don't want to finish that story. None of that's real. You might have heard that, but it's not real. I have my own version depending on who you are. Anyway, there we go. That is a mess, and it's supposed to look like one, and I'll catch up when this stuff dries out. All right, it's the next day, and it's time to get this stuff off here. Now, we got the Super Bowl of motocross going on again across the street. This time it's 50s or 80s or something. It's all wee, wee. But anyway, try to ignore that. Now, stay focused. Uh, this neck is just full of this mud. I just glopped it on there. You saw that. So we're going to take a scraper and we're going to knock off the stuff that's up here like so. And then we're going to sand it down like this and get this stuff off here. Now you might be thinking, hey, it doesn't look that different than the natural wood did. You see that there? There's comparison. Well, hey, guess what? There's a secret ingredient we're going to use, but I do have to tell you that we are going to have Tammy sign the front of this in ink pen before we do the final treatment. So I got to get this done. Now, I've had on some of my Instagram posts, people tell me, oh, what are you doing, dude? You're making, you're making guitar stain out of saprophytic tree gross and Mississippi clay dirt mud. Where do you come up with these ideas? Well, I'll tell you what. It just comes natural to me. It's just that easy. I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, just be blessed that you get to see this kind of creativity right here. All right, I got some sand to do. I'd love to chat with you all day, but you know what? I got to get this done. I'll catch up with you in a minute. All right, we are back. We stained this with potassium silicate followed by equal mix of ground material and Mississippi clay dirt and Mississippi river water. Slopped it on there, sanded it off, had Tammy sign it with a paint pen. Magic markers and Sharpies tend to smudge. Now, Remember, the wood started off looking like this. It doesn't look that much different, but we're going to take and put boiled linseed oil on it. You want to remember that. Boiled linseed oil rags will combust themselves, but watch what happens here. You ready? There we go. This is going to darken up after a couple coats. It's going to get radish like Mississippi clay soil. You're going to like it, trust me. You want to remember I'm using a wipe all rag, wipe all 80. And this is actually made out of paper. Um, and it won't have any dust or paper fragments or anything like that. So it's good stuff. We're just going to put this on here. And as the boiled linseed oil dries, it is going to take on a couple coats and it's going to turn a reddish brown. Again, I cannot tell you how careful you need to be 
with that barking dog back there. You know, with the uh, with these linseed oil rags because they will smolder and they will catch your shop on fire. Yeah, that oak there, this oak heel board is a little different color wood, but that's what it's going to look like. I'll get a couple coats on here over the days and then we'll have another look when the guitar's wrapped up. All right, guys, the neck is done. I like the color of the neck on the tulip poplar. I really like the way it contrasts with the oak. Um, we went ahead and put it in a license plate guitar that's going to go down to Mississippi. This is, believe it or not, matches the name of the person who's getting it, even though I found this personalized license plate in a junk shop in California. It's a small world. Anyway... Um, it's got a dog license tag uh, from 1955 up in the headstock. You wanted Tam signature. It's got Grover tuners. It's got that Eli Green hoodoo voodoo bead. Love the fingerboard. Darren Dukes did this fingerboard. Wrote junk pile in it. It's got a greaser. It's got a hot pickup. It's got a floating bridge. The strings are grounded with another piece of license plate metal, and it's got this tan uh, chocolate brown sunburst. Everything goes good together. I got the frame for the license plate body from Sawbox Guitars. I think I'll give you a link down below. So, hey, anytime you can use natural stuff to make a stain uh, and then cover it up with boiled linseed oil, you're good to go. You're not breathing all them chemicals and... Who knows what. Anyway, this one's going to ship down to Mississippi with a couple more guitars, and I hope to see them showing up at the festivals this summer. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, give me a like and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you soon.